this one. All right, as soon as I'm. Um, Good morning, everyone. We're going to reconvene an open session. Commissioners, we're a little behind. We can uh, skip commissioner comments or we'll go with them. Either way, your choice. Vice President Baker. Uh, commissioner Miles. I, uh, if it's all right, I just okay. want to thank our uh, business development for their quick response down in Mako. Um, last week, we had a, a House Bill 223 and Ineffective Business Subsidies Act of 2020. Um, and also thank the commissioners for responding so quickly. But um, with your responses, as quickly as they were, um, we were able to be the have detailed reasons on why we should be opposing this bill, and we were able to get MACO to hold it for a week. That's off the agenda again, and I'm pretty sure the Royal County Coalition last night voted to oppose this bill, um, and I'm pretty sure we're going to get MACO to be able to oppose this bill. The Maryland Chamber of Commerce is also opposing this bill. Uh, Secretary Kathy Schultz and um, is opposing, or yeah, is also opposing this bill. Um, and I would like for the county here to vote uh, so that we can get a letter, also for the county commissioners to oppose this bill. So when I testify against this, I can have the county's letter also. Commissioners, okay with having a letter? Um, just get us a draft copy. Approve. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Any other commissioners, like Wayne? Yeah, just one quick thing here. Back in November, December, I believe, we had a day to tour Rose Hill Manor, the historic home in Williamsport, and that was canceled for a reason. I don't quite recall why, but that has um, been rescheduled for us. We are invited this Saturday at 10 a.m. to tour the historic property. All commissioners are invited to attend, and several other people will be there as well. Good. So I'm hoping to see each of you there. I will be there, and I believe we may have a... Um, uh, Certificate of Appreciation for the owner of that property. So, so would you put out a commissioner's calendar and invite to so Will? Okay, thank you. Randy? Uh, morning. Well, we're this, this crowd's going to grow here in about an hour, I think. Uh, Want to remind everybody tomorrow our, our own uh, our Brooks House is going to be a segment on uh, uh, to the, to the, the Today Show. And it's titled Dad's Got This. It's about fathers who make a difference. So that'll be on it somewhere when it starts at 9, so somewhere in that segment if everybody's just bored sitting around eating bonbons and watching TV tomorrow morning. Uh, this might be something Commissioner Clank, I mean Commissioner Kiefer can, I think Hancock's working on a presentation, uh, an application with HGTV with uh, for a segment called Hometown Takeover. I think if... They, Wayne might be able to help me with that. I think if they do a takeover on, uh, it's a takeover of the town, which basically renovations of individual homes and uh, parks, uh, revitalization of parks and things like that. Uh, for our veterans, today, 1973, uh, there was a ceasefire in Vietnam. So I always got to include my veterans in on this. So appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, Terry, did you have anything? Well, if everyone's well, everybody commenting, else I just... I did have the uh, uh, opportunity to attend the Clear Spring Volunteer Fire Company Banquet this past Saturday night. What a wonderful event that was, recognizing all of our volunteers uh, for the many uh, things that they do for Washington County to save lives, put out fires, et cetera. But I thought uh, what was really, everything was special. But when you had your junior members march out there and come around, and uh, that was really, really uh, pretty awesome to see the young men and your young girls uh, being up, uh, being part of a, uh, a, a organization like the Clear Spring Volunteer Fire Company. And it just made me think sitting there, I don't know, I see Director Hayes is here. I don't know if there's an opportunity. Uh, you know, we've talked about doing some new things with our volunteer companies and so forth. Maybe there's some way we could include uh, these companies' uh, junior volunteers in on some of the incentives or something like that. I don't know if it's worthy of thought or not, but maybe you could talk to some of the people up at Clear Spring and the other uh, companies that have uh, the uh, junior firefighters and see if there's something that the county could help with that aspect of trying to recruit future volunteers. I just thought it was, it, that's what came to my, my mind. So if you'd look into that, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Um, I attended the Morgansville Fire Company Banquet Saturday. They honored two um, long-standing volunteers of 68 years each. J. 
Jason Bear and Charles Schindel. It was good to see them there and listen to their stories about how the volunteer system is evolving. I also attended the Martin Luther King celebration event at ACC last week. And last night I attended the MML meeting in Boonesboro. The most important thing out of there is the census. Register for the census. Be counted so we don't lose that income. That concludes my report. Reports from staff. County staff. Was for commissioner comments. Order who's here from the company. Okay, that would be staff. Um, is that the one he's doing? Yeah. So Wayne is up. So we want all those to come forward. Once we have them all set up here. Water quality. Would you guys come up here and set right there in the front row? Is that what you want? Yeah. I know. That's. We'll bring you up here. Hey, come on up. Bring him up, Jeremy. Dag on it. It's a surprise for everyone. <clears throat> right, you can sit right along those those chairs there, guys. Make yourself at home. Also we'll stand. Yeah. Um, we should have had this to move you. Okay. Um, so Jeremy, are you gonna introduce the matter? Is, are you introducing the matter? Yes, sir. Um, okay. I'm Jeremy Mays. I'm the director of employment. That's why I said staff come forward. That would have been. Um, I'm Jeremy Mays. I'm the director of environmental management. And um, this is our Conica Jig team here. Um, we have uh, um, Terry, or excuse me, Ed Richards, um, Eric Bear, uh, Terry Ray. Mike Hyatt and Todd Green. Um, seated back here is uh, Mark Bradshaw and Davina Yutzi, and we're here today because uh, the Conic Jig Wastewater Treatment Plant was uh, awarded an award from, e from the EPA for the design and implement implementation of a enhanced nutrient removal uh, system, and this is for public health and protects water quality, and it's an awesome achievement, and these guys, you know, they do a great job every day. Um, I'll go ahead and read this letter. This is the letter from the, the EPA to Commissioner Klein. Um, Thank you for Washington County's participation in the Maryland Department of the Environment Clean Water Service Revolving Loan Fund Program, the Enclosed Environmental Protection Agency uh, Performance and Innovation in Creating Environmental Success Program Certificate is presented to Washington County in recognition of the county's in, in, innovative use of performance funding for the Conica Jig Wastewater Treatment Plant. By conducting the upgrade and expansion of the county's uh, wastewater treatment plant, the county is reducing nutrient pollution in Potomac River and Chesapeake Bay. The project will result in a 60% reduction in nitrogen load and 84% 80, reduction, reduction in phosphorus load. The Washington County project is one of only 30 projects recognized nationally by the program for demonstrating environmental success, financial integrity, and compliance with the Clean Water Act. Congratulations on this achievement, and thank you for your commitment to water quality improvement and environmental public health protection through this investment in the infrastructure. And that's sincerely Laura Lean Reynolds, Chief, uh, a Chief uh, Partner op uh, Officer at EPA. Good, congratulations. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Um, Jeremy, would you assemble your team over there with Wayne? Thank you. Did you, did you drink the water after they treated? Because that's what they asked me. People may take for granted how easy it is. We have it in our homes when we flush the commode or turn on the shower. <coughs> that has to go somewhere. It has to be treated and cleaned. And we need to be mindful that it is treated and it is released back into the Potomac River once it's clean and treated and it's safe to drink. 
and for many people downstream, including here in Washington County, the Potomac River is a source of drinking water as well. So that cycle becomes full cycle, literally. So we have a 2019 Pisces recognition, honorable mention. Pisces is not the um, astrological symbol, I am a Pisces, but it stands for performance and innovation in the SRF creating environmental success presented to Washington County in recognition of the Conica Jig Wastewater Treatment Plant Enhanced Nutrient Removal Project. I know that was a multi-year project. Lots of money. Very good work. Let's, let's <laughs> I can I wear them. <coughs> That'd be pretty. Nope. Oops. Uh, continuing, continuing with our meeting, are there any other reports from county staff? Please come forward. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll do you last. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Hayes, I'm the Commissioner Director Hayes. Welcome. Yeah. Good morning, Commissioners. David Hayes, Director of Emergency Services. This is just, uh, should be pretty quick, a little bit of housekeeping from last week's presentation relative to uh, the motion and some of the things that we feel it might be best to come back and state a little more specifically uh, to each of the three um, conversations that we had. So we're looking to propose three different motions to you. All of them actually are encompassed in the ARF entirely, which was the uh, 36 firefighters, which included Roarsville, uh, keeping the paramedic in Roarsville and putting a single firefighter 24 hours a day in Hancock, the volunteer incentives, both company and personnel based, and then the EMS side of the plan, which is engaging in a new MOU uh, with the eight independent EMS companies that were replaced in 2009. So uh, if it's okay, I'd like to read some motions, see if we can have support for the three motions, and then to make sure that it's clean for the safer grant uh, application as well. We want to make sure that that language is clear so under order pardon me commissioners do you want to vote on all three at one time or individually what is your preference all three okay uh when we have discussion over those again because i abstained from that vote i wanted to make sure that certainly so uh, the first motion that we're going to look towards is to hire 36 firefighters which would keep the paramedic in roarsville the paramedic firefighter in roarsville and add the three additional that we need to staff one in hancock 24 hours a day. It also gives us the authority to move forward with a safer grant application for the 33 firefighters, not 36, because we would be hiring three of those paramedic firefighters out of the current FY20 budget. The second would be for the uh, new MOUs with the eight independent companies that would struck, be structured to normalize or standardize health benefits, wages, workers' comp, and retirement or 401k plans. And then the third one would be to authorize us to <coughs> finalize and implement the volunteer-based incentives, which are the company-based uh, pay-per-call and then fundraising incentives. And then the second part of that is the personnel-based volunteer that incentivizes call responses. So those are the three motions that so we need. Part of those 36 firefighters you're hiring would be the 29 from the SAFER grant? We would actually be hiring 33 under the SAFER grant. Plus the 36? 
No. Total. That's what I mean. That's yeah, part 36 of the in total. Three we would hire out on cash money, FY20. The safer grant would be for 33 instead of 29. And is this, pl this plan is still contingent upon successful, um, successfully receiving the safer grant? It is not. It is executable with or without a safer grant. The only difference is timing. It would take us about 18 months longer to fully implement it, the firefighter side of this uh, if a safer grant was not executed. The budget planning that Sarah had done previous escalates and brings into an anticipated budget funding over the next three years, expecting that the safer grant would expire even if it was awarded. So in the three-year total time, we would have had the full funding for the plan. That adds into the additional money that you were going to authorize for the extra three firefighters down south and the extra three firefighters to deal with uh, somebody in Hancock. So if you want the fiscal uh, rundown of that, I actually have that information here today if you want to hear each year's fiscal commitment for fire. And you're asking for the state just for a clarification of what was voted on last week or the week before? Yeah, just a, so more of an ex expansion of the motion. The motion last week spoke specifically to the SAFER grant, but we actually didn't get language in there, I don't believe, to cover the EMS and or the uh, volunteer incentives. So we just want to make sure that for record purposes that that intent is clear and, and we have that covered. I'm okay with voting on it as one item. I think this is what I... One item at a time? Or I'm sorry, uh, all together? All things, yeah. So moved. I have a first and a second. Any other discussion? I just want to thank Dave. Um, on one day last week, we um, I Dave came up with me to be interviewed by the local Hancock newspaper about our plan. They took interest because Hancock was mentioned, obviously. I didn't realize it was a federal holiday, Martin Luther King Day. We were closed when I had reached out to Dave, but Dave was more than welcome to come up, and I even gave him an out if he didn't want to. So Dave came up on his day off to no help get the word out. So thank you for that. No worry. We have a first and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? I'm going to abstain again. Okay. All right, Four. thank you for the thank you. clarification. Any other reports from county staff? Please come forward, introduce yourself, and the matter. Good morning. My name is Rachel Brown, and I'm the county HR director. And I have two things to discuss this morning. The first is that we are intending to start the advertising process for the county administrator role. The press release will be shared today and that information will become available, but we are going to be uh, recruiting and advertising for that position across four different local and national government association websites and information will be shared on that position. Thank you. The second thing I wanted to share this morning is just an update regarding the retirement portal. So uh, in past few weeks, there's been lots of conversation about employees being able to request information about retirement. We have worked with Fulton, who is our actuarial partners. So we have a portal that will be available. We're um, implementing this hopefully the end of this week, Friday, where employees will be able to go online and be able to access information for retirement projections. So more information will be shared about with that with um, senior management so that they can share it with county employees. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other staff reports? Please come forward. Good morning. Scott Hobbs, Director of Engineering. This is Garrett Culler, our Survey Party Chief. I'd like to publicly congratulate and recognize Garrett Culler on obtaining his a professional surveyor license. Garrett's worked with us in engineering department for 10 years and to pass uh, the surveying license exam is quite an achievement. It includes passing the principles of practice of land surveying examination, the Maryland Law and Ethics examination, road grade and storm drain design examinations. So I wanted to publicly uh, congratulate him on behalf of our department. We're very proud of, of what he's done over the years for Washington County. Congratulations. Thank you. We have a certificate. Please join me. So we have a certificate of recognition recognizing Mr. Bones of Garrett 
three to four thousand people that live up and down Maryland hereby commend you and your dedication, hard work, and preparing <coughs> and passing multiple examinations to obtain your professional land surveyor license. Land surveying is an, an integral component of all infrastructure design and construction. Your outstanding contributions will add to the success of Washington County projects. Congratulations on becoming a professional surveyor. Are there any other county staff? Krista? I guess we'll come here. I have a recommendation to appoint on the Women's um, Washington County Commission for Women, Tina Fraley, to serve a first three year term from February 1st, 2020 through January 31st, 2023. Commissioners? Motion to approve. Second. First and second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, any all in favor say aye. 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 Mr. Downey. Uh, just a reminder that the day in Annapolis is tomorrow. Uh, we will be in Annapolis with our coalition partners uh, talking to uh, our local delegates and senators. I look forward to that day, as well as the uh, Washington County reception that evening at Advertise. Any other staff report I may have missed? Right, seeing none, we'll go to citizens' participation. Please remember to keep your comments to approximately three minutes. So they could do both. If, if you want to have comments today and in the hearing, you're more than welcome. Oh, they're two separate items. Yes, sir, and try to please keep your comments to about three minutes. Yes, sir, certainly will. Thank you. And if you need a little extra time, we will help you with that. Do you state your name yes, and address. Well, gotcha. Different, but related. Greetings. Okay. It's Stephen McDonough. It's 16906 Pickwick Lane, Hagerstown, Maryland. I'm here to let you know today that uh, the rollout of this public notice, and I'm not sure if you're aware of it, the public notice for the meeting, uh, it was not accurate. And in fact, uh, one of our group thinks it was an intentional act to tamp down the uh, citizen participation. The original posting showed up in the uh, December 31st newspaper. Uh, it gave all the pertinent information. It says the uh, copies of the uh, proposed ordinance would be available at the uh, county office building, which I suppose it was, and that it would also be available online. It was not available online <clears throat> until January the 7th. That's when it was made available. As a result of it not being available, Ms. Hart received multiple emails about uh, having copies of it. As a result of that, she'd come back from uh, vacation. She's not aware that the uh, notice is put in the paper and that there is a... Uh, proposed uh, ordinance. So she uh, sends out to everyone that uh, asked for it, uh, letting them know that there's an error, that the, uh, there is no such thing as a proposal, okay, and that there needs to be a meeting held before it is uh, generated. After uh, an exchange of emails between Ms. Hart and I, it was resolved uh, early on the 2nd. But I still received reports until uh, January the 4th that they were still getting the same message 
that it was not available. I just want to make certain that everybody that made uh, a request uh, for a copy of it through email before January the 7th is uh, uh, sent a uh, copy of it. Okay. Now, unfortunately, yeah, fortunately, I, I received a copy. Ms. Hort made sure I, I got a copy of it on uh, the 2nd from, I believe, uh, Tiffany Miller. And I did dispense that to uh, everyone that uh, sent me a message about it not being available. Okay, so uh, if I don't. Been, if there's been an error, please accept our apology if there's been any miscommunication. It looks like we were trying to help you as best then once you discovered that error. Yeah, so I, I understand. So please I, accept you know, that apology. Uh, I actually look at it, uh, ch check it off to uh, either a human error or a faulty uh, system where you're not, you know, you're posting this before you verify that the information is available. I'd also like to mention that uh, on January the 7th, uh, to find this thing, we had to go five, double, uh, five levels deep into the website into what appears to be the bios for the uh, county attorney. Okay? Now, I have a 32-inch screen as a monitor. So the, the icons or tiles, whatever you want to call it, that <coughs> reference to uh, the department heads, just says county attorneys, uh, administrator, okay? And you go there, and the first thing you see is, is a uh, bio. You get a mission statement, and uh, you're there looking for an ordinance. So you leave that site, okay? In the meantime, if you scroll way down the page, there it is. It needs to, uh, your website needs to be updated, make it uh, more user friendly, and uh, all the information accessible. Okay, it's misleading. And then I have one other item that's sensitive, but I'm gonna share it anyway, and it's about Mr. Bright. Okay, and his uh, choice of words to describe our uh, communities as opulent. I challenge him to show us one uh, community that is opulent, okay? And in fact, we suggest that he receive some sensitivity training and empathy training because it's clear that he has absolutely no uh, idea of what the normal citizen in Washington County's uh, life is like, okay? It's just as simple as that. Uh, you guys rely on him to give you unbiased information, and it's clear with his choice of words and his actions that he is biased, and it needs to be resolved. Thank you. Are there any other citizens who'd like to come forward? Please do. State your name. And address, please. Thank you. Um, my name is Doug Gansler, and I am a citizen not of, unfortunately, of Washington County, but of Montgomery County. Um, my address is 3706 Williams Lane. I'm here, though, on a Washington County issue representing Lakeside and a, a manufacturer housing on, on the bill today. And I will keep my remarks to three minutes, but I want to start by thanking the commission for looking at this issue. It's um, it's an interesting issue because in 1963, this bill was passed as an, it resolving, the, the tax was passed about automobile trailers. And that is, is kind of like what we think of as mobile homes. Um, back then there were transient folks coming through Washington County using Washington County services, often staying weeks, months, um, even years, and, and sending their kids to school and using the water and using the services and not paying any taxes. Um, that's different than the manufactured home industry, and there's three uh, manufactured home uh, properties, I guess, in, in Washington County, Lakeside being the biggest. And um, the problem, of course, is that every county in Maryland has gotten rid of this because they looked at the legislative intent and realized that the folks living at Lakeside, the 515 or some odd homes there are permanent residents of Washington County. They pay rent to Lakeside. Lakeside. Dave Sherrill, who owns Lakeside, pays every month diligently and for the last 20 years uh, taxes to, to Washington County. Um, 
my position, I think, just looking at it, is that this tax has been mistakenly collected since uh, for the last 56 years, and um, that Washington County ought to join the other counties and not impose this extra sort of double tax on people making earned uh, fixed income, seniors, firefighters, first responders, and others um, that need affordable housing in Washington County. But if, um, and, and I think that's why we're here, because we'll, you're looking at this issue, and I think it's the right thing to do. The question, though, is it's been a 15% tax, and Excuse me, would Sorry. you repeat that again, what you just said about... Uh, See, the problem is I don't take notes. I don't remember what I said. I guess... You just uh, talked about uh, what some of the other counties are doing oh, with that tax. Yeah, so Anne Arundel and Hartford County actually had the same tax because they had the same issues back in the early 60s of, of people. And, you know, what we think mm -hmm. of as trailer homes, mobile homes, coming through parking, mm -hmm. plugging themselves in and being taxed, which is was the right thing to do at the time. And so they've gotten rid of it. So Washington County is actually the only county in the state that still has this tax because if that's, you read it. That's not true. It's my understanding that it's true. That's incorrect. Okay. Well, then I stand corrected. But my understanding is that Hartford and Anne Arundel don't have it, and I'm unaware which county does. I think but there's three counties that don't have it. Okay. There are at least 15 that do. Okay. I think that. Uh, let him I, finish. I, I didn't mean to interrupt. This is just for citizens' comments. It's not a discussion I back. There's wrong forward. information. That okay, you uh, and I apologize. Later, I'm, I'm, I'm Mr. Gansler, unaware would you of that. Please Thank continue you. Then. Um, Thank you, sir. And so, you, so the issue then is for these folks that are on fixed incomes and and don't have extra money for taxes, that do believe they are permanent residents of Washington County because their houses can't just. I mean, phys they could technically be lifted, but it's so can anybody's house. Um, the question is sort of whether they ought to be paying taxes and what the tax rate ought to be. And right now it's 15%, and you're looking at reducing it to 7.5 or the $25, whichever is less, which is wonderful. The only issue that I have, if the commission were going to do that, is if you look at the bill, it's a little inconsistent, um, 2.04 with 3.04, which is right now and has been interpreted until very, very recently by the county that the owner of, of the park would pay um, on the rental received. That is income to the owner. So let's just take for easy the numbers. Let's say it's $100 is the rent. Then 15% of that would go to, to, to the county. Um, there's been some recent issues with, somebody, with people in the county thinking, in addition to that rent, water and sewer ought to be part of sort of gross income. But the owners actually don't make that. It's just a pass through. The owners are actually collecting those taxes on behalf of the utility company and sending it to them. So it, it, it's a little, it, it seems to me pretty clear in 3.04, which says the tax imposed by this ordinance is upon the rental income. But then if you look at 204, it, it somebody could interpret it as saying, or for other services provided. Um, so I think that ought to be uh, clarified. But in any event, I think it, it, my view is that this, the taxes shouldn't be collected, but if they are, it ought to be just sh on the rental income as it has been over the last few decades. And uh, thank you for your... Uh, thank you me. for consideration of time, and you're welcome to testify during the public hearing. Thank you so much. Um, if folks, if you're here to testify for the public hearing, you're more than welcome to give comment during citizens' comment and the public hearing. So it'll be your choice if you want to do one or both. So with saying that, is there anyone else for citizens' uh, comments? And please limit your time to three minutes approximately. Anyone else would like to come forward? Okay, once, twice. All right, we'll continue then with... The next agenda item, proclamation presentation, earn income tax credit awareness. All right, I think I have uh, Nita Carter, Tracy Kwame, and Dennis Ramirez. We'll let them talk. I have a, you all are uh, actually on behalf of the IRS. Right. So you all my friend, right? Yes, we yeah. are. <laughs> Just checking. Uh, okay, this is a proclamation for earn, Earned Income Tax Credits Awareness Day. There's going to be a lot of where is is here. Just hang with me. Okay. Whereas since its enactment in 1975, 
The earned income tax credit had lifted millions of families above the poverty line and has had a high participation rate relative to other programs targeted at low incomes Americans. And whereas each year the earned, earned income tax credit, which is EITC, supports the financial stability of over 25 million low and moderate income workers by reducing their federal tax burden. Whereas these dollars are being spent within the local economy and are additionally investments in our business community. And whereas the IRS works with national partners, community-based coalitions, and thousands of local partners and governments that provide free tax help, otherwise known as volunteer income tax assistance, that's abbreviated VITA, and education about EITC. And whereas EITC Awareness Day is a day where cities and citizens work together to spread awareness of the tax credit and help build a stronger economic community. Now, therefore, we the board of County Commissioners of Washington County, Maryland, do hereby recognize January 31st, 2020 as EITC Awareness Day in Washington County and encourage all citizens to join to raise awareness of this important tax credit awarded this day to one 28th day of January 2020 by the Washington County Boards of Commissioners. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. that word means. What's that word mean? <laughs> Hello, uh, my name is Anita Carter and I am from the Internal Revenue Service. Um, they want me to give you a little brief on what um, aware EITC Awareness Day is. And it's a day where community organizations, elected officials, state and local governments, schools, employers, and other interested parties to partner in a national effort to increase awareness of refundable credits by shining a large spotlight on them from multiple media sources. We want to generate extensive news media coverage on this specific day or multiple days to increase awareness among potentially eligible taxpayers at the time most of the filing are getting ready to take place. The IRS joins partners nationwide to launch Awareness Day outreach campaign to ensure millions of workers get the credit they earn and deserve. Um, four out of five eligible taxpayers receive the earned income credit. This means that millions are putting their earned income credit tax dollars to work for them. But missing in that one and under four is that fifth, which means the millions are not taking advantage of this valuable credit they've earned. Almost a third of those who qualify for the earned income tax credit qualify for the first time this year due to changes in their marital, parental, or financial status. This is why our outreach um, is so important. So that's why we um, promote Earned Income Tax Credit Awareness Day so those low income and can go out there and get the, the earned income credit. We also have volunteer income tax sites around the county. We do have one in Washington County. It's the Washington County Commission on Aging. Um, you can call them and make an appointment and go and get your return prepared free if you make less than $59,000. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you thank very much. Next on our agenda, the bid award roof 
membrane replacement. Staff, please come forward and introduce the matter. Brandy Good Noggle, Purchasing Department. Mike Smith, uh, Department of Water Quality. The first recommendation I have for you this morning is for the bid award PR 1452 for the roof membrane replacement. We move to award the contract for the roof membrane replacement to the responsible responsive bidder D Project Incorporated out of Annapolis, Maryland, who submitted the lowest total sum price of $260,000. On October 30th, we put the invitation to bid out and received on December 4th back um, eight bids. 32 companies did download the document and eight were received back. The funds are available in this uh, department's capital improvement plan. Commissioners, comments? Make the motion to uh, approve D project of Annapolis for the roof membrane. Second. First and second, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Five oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, intergovernmental cooperative purchase. Assemble your team, please. <clears throat> okay, the next recommendation I have for you this morning is for the Intergovernmental Cooperative Purchase of nine 2020 Ford Police Interceptor Utility Vehicles for the Washington County Sheriff's Department. Move to authorize by resolution for the Washington County Sheriff's Office to purchase nine 2020 Ford, uh, Ford Police Interceptor utility vehicles from Heritage Fleet out of uh, Bilford, Delaware. The cost of seven of the vehicles for the Sheriff's Office are $33,753 each. The two, vehicle, two vehicles for the Child Support Division are $37,066 each for a total amount of $310,403. The Sheriff's Department will utilize another jurisdiction's contract that was awarded by the State of, the Mar State of Maryland Department of General Services. Also in this recommendation, we're asking for the approval of a budget transfer request in the amount of $54,565. Per the Code of Public Law of Washington County, um, it provides that the Board of Washington County Commissioners may procure goods and services through another jurisdiction's uh, contract. By doing so, the county will benefit uh, by direct cost savings in the purchase of these vehicles due to the leverage that this group has, uh, has uh, set forth. Uh, again, we're asking for the approval of the award, also the approval of the budget transfer. Just for my... Uh, personal knowledge um, on the two child support vehicles it has the 3.3 hybrid engine type Ford 10 MPH is there a requirement for that on for the child support because it's not on the other vehicles no it's not that's actually like a a, um, a trial project while we're having these are grant vehicles by the way commissioners um, two-thirds of this will be paid for by the state uh, the hybrids allegedly will get eight more miles per gallon than the others uh, we'd like to try that. If you're talking 16 miles per gallon as opposed to 24 miles per gallon, that's a substantial savings in fuel. Exactly. We may expand that project. Okay. I just wanted to understand. Thank you. Thank you. I'll make the motion to approve if there's both. I'll the award and budget transfer. Is that how you want it read? Yes. Yeah. I second it. I have a first and second. Commissioners, any comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Five zero. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Bid award uniforms for Washington County Sheriff. Okay, I thought he was here. My last uh, recommendation this morning is for the bid award PR 1453 
for the uniforms for the Washington Car County Sheriff's Office, move to award the contract to the responsive responsible bidder, Howard Uniform out of Baltimore, Maryland, who submitted a, submitted a total uh, bid for $107,000. $42.50. Again, this is an estimate made a quanti uh, quantity for the uniforms. The bid was advertised on the state of Maryland's e Maryland Marketplace website, the county's website, and the local newspaper. Four companies downloaded the document, and two bids were received, one of which was deemed non responsive. This would be for a period of one year with five additional one year periods uh, that would be approved by the board. Funds are available in various departments' budgets for this commodity. Commissioners? Uh, on the $107,000 there, the total sum of the bid, so that is a one-year bid, and then... That, that's based on estimated quantities, what they currently have. They, we don't guarantee a minimum or maximum, so okay. it's estimated. Thank you. Commissioner's thoughts? Comments? Motion. Motion to uh, approve as presented. Second. First and second. Any other comments? Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Five zero. Thank you. Mr. Boggs, would before we begin, how would you finish this in a reasonable time frame so I get the public hearing started yeah. close to eleven? Morning. Morning, Chris. Right, this is uh, for our yearly rural legacy grant. This would be the fiscal year 21. Um, just uh, looking for approval to uh, submit the grant application in the requested amount of $5,326,000. Um, I think most of you are pretty familiar with the rural legacy program. We've got over 7,000 acres in it now, and uh, we're looking to add a bunch more on hopefully next year with our expanded area. So any questions? Motion to approve. Second. I have first and second. Any other questions? Hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. And would you all please allow a three minute recess before we begin the public hearing?
Beginning in the next few seconds. Thank you very much. Thank you, Terry. All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Um, please forgive her, run about five minutes behind, but give everyone an ample time to, to arrive. Next on the agenda is a public hearing concerning the mobile home park tax ordinance for Washington County. Excuse me. The purpose of this hearing is to hear public testimony concerning the matter. The procedure is as follows. We will, have, we will first have staff introduce the matter, after which the hearing will be open for public comment and testimony. Each speaker will be given a maximum of three minutes to testify. I'm not going to cut you off at three minutes and five seconds, but try to be precise. And if someone has said something similar, you can acknowledge that in agreement. But in order to have the meeting run uh, in a professional manner, try to keep it as close as three minutes as possible. After everyone who wishes to speak has done, the hearing will close. The commissioners may then discuss the issue and take any action that they deem appropriate including adoption, rejection of the proposal, or they may take the issue under advisement and deliberate at a later date. Andrew Bright, <coughs> Sarah Graves, and Mr. Hershey, would you please come forward and introduce the matter? Did, did you, you get, that I yeah, probably either, let's do it up front here. Sure. And Sarah, okay, thank you. Commissioners, at your request, a proposed ordinance has been prepared and has been provided to you. It is posted on the uh, 
uh, County website, and um, it does uh, repeal and reenact with some significant modifications the 1963 uh, resolution that first imposed a uh, tax on, at that time, automobile trailers. That, that resolution obviously contains some language which has become uh, beyond dated, perhaps antiquated at this point, and some terms that uh, we would not use in modern parlance. The existing uh, resolution has been completely unchanged since 1963. It imposed a 15% tax on uh, gross rental uh, charges that were collected by the mobile home uh, park. That uh, term is very broadly defined in that resolution and it is very broadly defined in the uh, proposed uh, ordinance which is before you. Um, at your request, the proposed ordinance would reduce the rate of the tax to 7.5% or $25 per month per rental space, whichever is less resulting in effect a $25 a month cap uh, per uh, rental space. The proposed ordinance also includes uh, provisions necessary for enforcement of the tax and for reporting by mobile home uh, park operators so that the tax can be um, efficiently collected. It also includes well, strike that. Um, at Mr. Hershey's request, it perhaps should include a uh, provision that the tax, if unpaid, would result in an automatic lien upon the real estate upon which the park is operated. And this would um, help to avoid some evasion issues which resulted recently in the hotel motel uh, tax. Obviously a separate matter. The existing uh, tax has been yielding approximately $600,000 annually to the county. The proposed ordinance as it's written um, is estimated to uh, that it would yield about $250,000 annually depending upon um, fa factors such as the, the rate of occupancy and the amount of rental that is charged. The rate of that tax is obviously within your sound discretion. The matter has been debated and uh, discussed extensively over the last six months or so. And um, that is what we have to submit at this point. I have no comments. Uh, Basically, uh, just to follow up, uh, yes, we are considering a rate change, reduction, elimination. Uh, the second item I think of significance in the proposed ordinance is that the, uh, if there is a percentage reduction, that that percentage of the tax, that tax needs to be paid by the mobile home operator and not, the, uh, not built as a separate line item on the uh, invoices for the residents of the mobile home. Uh, finally, uh, uh, Attorney Bright mentioned the fact that it, uh, we do request that uh, unpaid mobile home taxes be a lien on the real estate. Thank you. Thank you. We will now open the hearing for public comment. Anyone wishing to testify? Please come forward, give your name and address, and please try to keep close to three minutes as possible. We thank you for being here. Name and address, folks. Again, my name is Stephen McDonough. It's 16906 Pickwick Lane. Uh, we, Ken, we're, you're here, and I do appreciate the fact that you uh, made arrangements for this uh, public hearing. Uh, before it... Uh, before I go any further, I just want to make certain I don't forget one, so I want to mention it now. You're welcome to be seated, sir. Uh, okay. you would like. <coughs> oh, yeah, you folks can wait and be seated, or, or whatever, if you're welcome to standing there. That's fine. 
I'm sorry for the interruption. That's okay. Um, my first response is going to be something that Mr. Hershey just said, and I'm going to mention it so that uh, I don't forget it in uh, what I have prepared to say. Okay. He mentioned that uh, this tax would no longer show up as a line item in, uh, on a statement uh, from our property owners. Okay. That is nothing but a way to take and hide the fact that we're still going to be paying that tax. You cannot put a fee on to the property owner that is not going to be directly passed on to the tenants. And we are tenants. We're renters. We pay rent for property that we don't own. I, I know that some people uh, say that we have to pay taxes and die and don't recognize renters or tenants as contributing taxpayers in this community. But if you allow this, the, uh, this partition or whatever uh, uh, you want to call it uh, to, to go and enact the uh, statement that he just said, all you're doing is, is the same thing that's happening for the last 56 years. You're, tax, you're taxing us, and nobody's going to know about what the tax is that you're being taxed on. It'll be a hidden item. Now, to start uh, the original presentation, I just want to say that uh, all of the information that we've supplied to you in the last four months, uh, we'd like to have uh, entered into the record. Uh, that information has been verified uh, by uh, Ms. Reeves and by Mr. Hershey as being accurate. All the dollar values, all their percentages, all the uh, repeals that's been uh, done in the other counties, been verified. Okay. So, but everybody in this room, okay, that's here today, and I think the majority of you realize what this tax actually is. It's nothing but an excessive, hidden, uh, indirect way of taxing our personal property. The state of Maryland declares our homes to be personal property. Rather than unable to be able to tax our property, what they've done is they've taken and instituted a space tax. They put a tax on uh, the space that our homes sit on. Currently at 15%, generates $66.60 a month in taxes. It also results in double taxation. Not only do we pay the 66.60, uh, we're reimbursing our property owners for a total of $274 a year, meaning that our take and uh, we're responsible for a total of $1,074 a year in taxes to the county. Okay, that relates in real property tax to a home of $107,400. There's not a single home in our community that is worth that. Now, having said before that uh, you guys don't believe that um, renters are responsible taxpayers in the community, we are. Okay? Now, throughout this, people have made comments. $10 for a double or for a single Y, $15 for a double Y, $35 base, 7.5% base, 7.5 and, and $25. And I sit there and I'm just thinking, these guys are pulling this number out of the air. You have two realtors on this board, okay, that anytime they start discussing home values and everything, the first thing they do is prove compar comparables. That's the first thing they do, okay? This thing's been hidden for uh, 56 years, four months ago when we started it. You had no idea that this tax was even being applied until we brought it up. Okay, this tax is excessive, it's unneeded, it's outdated, double taxation. Uh, you would think that uh, some of you, some of you spent 14 years, 12 years, uh, six and uh, two years on this. You would think the first thing you do on the first day that you take office is to get a list from the uh, treasurer of all the taxes that are being uh, collected within the county and how much those taxes contribute to uh, the budget, okay? You would think that would happen, so you would be aware of it. 
Okay, okay. but now, just to give you comparisons. Would you be able to sum up here, because you're over the three. But one correction, I'm, I'm an inactive realtor. I am not active as a realtor right now. Uh, your bio says you are. Yeah, I, well, this should have been changed on there, but I'll, okay. I'll, just for the record, but I need you to begin summing up so I can keep okay. the order. I don't want to cut you off. You have a lot to say. Okay. But, well, in, in summary, in direct response to Mr. Wagner's, uh, uh, do you pay taxes and die? That wasn't a quote, but go ahead. Did, that is quote. No, no, my dad's quote. Okay. But, but go ahead. I, okay. So it's your belief then. Go ahead. Okay. Anyway, I, what I've done is run comparables. Okay. Now, to use uh, Mr. Bright's word, some of these uh, apartment complexes that I'm going to give you numbers on are more opulent than the others. Okay, You'll find that we actually pay twice as much in taxes as what the more opulent apartment complexes do. You'll find that we pay more taxes than what the uh, real comparable complexes are paying. You have the Bradford. 415 or 418 uh, units, $181 a year. You have the Bradford again for an additional 418 units, $226 a year. The Bradford again for 66 units, $550 a year. You have Brightwood Garden Apartments, 33 units, $548 a year. Edgewood Hill, 110 apartments, they pay $529. Long Meadow Apartments, 66, they're paying $269 a year. Orston Gardens, 100 units, $216 a year. The Meadows Apartment, 72 units, $418 a year. Uh, we have Milestone Gardens, 200, or 96 units, they pay $415 a year. Milestone, Milestone, $404. Uh, I also want to add that uh, Milestone has a uh, has two acres of property there. They paid nine dollars and forty eight cents in taxes on those two acres, while we pay one thousand twenty seven uh, uh, dollars on one twentieth of an acre. Okay, London Town, eighty units. They pay five hundred and sixteen dollars. London Town. 120 units, $498. London Town, 519. Robinwood, 72, 300 or $530. Robinwood again, 72 units, 534. Oak Ridge, 407 on 220 units. Oak Ridge, 121 uh, units, 374. Oak Ridge, 399. Okay, is what they are doing, but yet they're not uh, considered to be a contributing taxpayer according to some of the individuals who sit on this board. Uh, your primary job in existence as being the government is to protect the citizens of the county. Okay? You sh should be protecting us from your predecessors. Pre yeah, your predecessors. You should also be protecting us from yourselves. This law, again, is nothing but excessive. It's a backwards, appro or backwards approach to tax our personal property. And quite frankly, there's at least three of you one I consider to be a moderate, that have no right to sit in those seats based on that uh, definition. Thank you. Um, polite, thank Hello. you. Name and address and a polite reminder to try to stay as close as three minutes as possible. My name is George Buckheit, 17004 Burwood Court. Good morning. Good morning. After doing a research on the matter of taxi mobile home residents, I have come to the realization that this is unfair and unjust burden to mobile home communities in Washington County, Maryland, to constituents that you represent. This tax was enacted on July 2nd, 1963 to tax the small trailers that were being hauled by automobiles into the county for short-term workers and vacationers passing through. This tax is a remnant of a time where mobile homes were actually mobile and owners didn't pay property taxes. Now, decades later, mobile home parks are occupied by long-term residents who pay income taxes that go to the county. These folks are fully vested in Morrison County. In addition, the owners of the mobile home parks pay property taxes, just as owners of apartment complexes. However, 
apartment residents don't pay an additional tax like the mobile home tax that we, the residents of the mobile home communities, pay. That extra $60, $66 a month to me is double dipping. We, the residents of Lakeside Village, are grateful for the county services provided by law enforcement, correctional officers, firefighters, schools. But we already pay our fair share through income taxes and the landlord's property taxes. We're part of the community. It just doesn't seem fair that we have to pay this additional tax. The property owner that owns the land that our mobile homes reside on pays a large property tax. Therefore, I am requesting that the antiquated and unjust automobile trailer camps tax ordinance that you, the Commissioner of Washington County, want to change be abolished. Also, I'd like to add that in a recent article in the local newspaper, Washington County officials stated that they want to do something to help local mobile homeowners who believe they are being overtaxed. Well, sirs, we not only believe we're being overtaxed, we are very aware what's, that we're being overtaxed. And once again, it must be pointed out that folks who rent apartments in our communities do not, I repeat, do not pay this additional tax. Why then should we? In a news article, it also noted that Washington County Commissioners, Mr. Terry Baker and Mr. Wayne Kiefer, stated that they think the law and its tax should be repealed, and we thank them for that support. In closing, I'd like to point out that Baltimore County, Howard County, and Arundel County have found this tax to be unfair, unacceptable, and they have eliminated it. We are here today to request that you, the commissioners, add Washington County to that list. Thank you. Name, address, please. And um, my name is Jessica Lumen. I'm at 16926 Alcott Road and, and also in Lakeside Village. Um, when I was originally told about this tax, I thought, hey, we're supposed to pay our fair share. And, but that was until <coughs> I researched, I did more research and realized I am paying my property tax, but I'm also now paying this additional tax. With, I did the same research that he did, found out it was for transients and everything else. and you know, this is why it's outdated. You know, and it's back when this was initiated, Washington County was a rural community. There was nine, there were 91,000 people. There weren't that many people to collect property taxes from. Now we have almost 151,000 people in this county that including large homes and everything else that are getting taxed and receiving, you guys are getting taxed, <coughs> counties getting tax money from that too. So now, but now also looking at, I'm not sure if you knew that mobile homes can get a Kelly Blue Book value. My 20 year old house is worth a total of $17,000. If you look up in the counties at the Maryland state tax, property tax rates, I should be paying only about $131, or $131 a year on my property tax, not even the $274 a year that I'm paying through the group tax that's done on everybody. And it's the whole digging further. If we actually went and got assessments on our homes, I bet you 90% of Lakeside Park would be reducing their property taxes even further. Not even in addition to reducing this one. We're right now paying the amount of somebody that has a $100,000 uh, home, uh, home. And I'm telling you this one, even when I bought my home, it wasn't that much. Um, looking up at the different counties, in the law, in 2016, Charles County took a look at this law and it put at a max that it's charged $250 per year. Now, you look at Charles, the difference between Charles County. Our median income here in Washington County is around $58,000 a year, or per, per, you know, median income. Charles County is 93,000, but yet they felt that they, our, our poverty rate is at 12.8%, whereas Charles County is at 6.9%. Ours is double of theirs, yet they felt that they, the most that they wanted to cha charge their citizens was a little over $20 a month for this tax. Now, if you look at the fact that you have all of these homeowners, we're, we're not asking for, we're not asking to say, oh, hey, we're not paying any taxes. We just want to be fair. We want it to be fair and get charged for, pay the taxes on the value of what we actually even own. It's, you have a lot of, especially a lot of retirees, and if you, you say, oh, why don't you just move? I can't sell my house. Once you, it's a 20 year old home, but it's, it costs, it costs me $90,000 on my mortgage. 
can I sell it back for that? No, I'm going to be lucky if I get $12,000 for my house. But you have a lot of retirees and people, you know, this isn't a big amount for myself. But for those that are in my community that <coughs> they're on fixed incomes, the more that this goes up, 15%, 7.5%, it might not seem a lot to some of the people on this board, but it is a lot to them. This could be medicine. This could be food. This could be just basic living costs that they could be using that it could go towards versus doing this tax. <coughs> and so when you look at 7.5%, the people that this was originally targeted, <coughs> those mobile homes, which you're saying Jellystone and everything else, that was turned into a 6% hotel tax. That means that the tourist industry matters more than the 7.5% that you're wanting to charge residents for those for for that. So we, we don't even rate tourist level. So I mean, in all honesty, that's that's the main reason I came here to say this is because we're already paying our taxes. And I appreciate the services and I appreciate your time. And I just think this needs to be repealed because it's not fair for us to be double dipped. Thank you for your time. Um, please state your name, address and Keep as close to three minutes as you can. I'll try, sir. I Thank you very much. That. Good morning, everyone. My name is Anthony Quirk. I reside at 16802 Alcott Road, also in Lakeside Village. I am one of the fixed income retirees that the previous uh, commenter spoke about. Um, I'm retired, as I mentioned, on a fixed income. I'm also divorced. So a portion of that goes directly to my ex-wife. What would have been sufficient for two people to reasonably live on has us both basically struggling month to month just to make ends meet. Um, just for background information, last year, my monthly pay or retirement pay went up $84.70 a month. My health insurance went up $76.13 a month. The rent went and tax included with it went up $20 a month. My car insurance went up $20 a month. And my medications actually went up $187 a month because of a, another medical condition I have. What that means is my expenses went up over $100 something dollars and the difference is I am now 31 something less per month in my savings account once things are done. Um, this is an issue that's going to continue to go on if you allow the taxes to stay at this rate. I'm eventually going to get priced out and be able to afford all my medications. That happened a couple of years ago. Um, I ended up spending four days in the hospital because of it. That's what, one of the reasons why I have the additional medication bills now. Uh, I don't have an opulent or extravagant lifestyle to be able to afford my medication. I no longer have cable TV. I don't have satellite TV, no Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, or any of the rest of that. I don't have a cell phone. I don't even have a regular phone. So if I need to call for assistance, it's basically opening the door, screaming out, and hoping one of my neighbors could call 911 for me. But that's on the personal, personal issue. That's how these taxes affect a retiree who can't make any more money stuck basically where he is. On, on a fairness perspective, my unit is valued, well, I could probably sell it for around 51000 if I'm lucky at this point. This tax rate, the way it's presently set now, charges me about $800 a year for that $51,000 home. I looked this morning at a house I'd been interested in before on College Road that sold for 204000 approximately four times the amount my place is worth. Their taxes is $1,400 a year. At the same rate that my place is being taxed at, they should be paying $3,200. It's a big difference between the two, $800 to $3,200. That, that's just basic fairness, and I think it's something that you need to take into account, especially since the people who are living in our community are usually lower income, fixed rate people like myself. So I would sincerely ask you to consider either reducing or preferably eliminating the tax the way it's currently being handled. Thank you. Your next name and address, sir. Okay, my name is Wendy French. Goose, a goose for me talking that that. I had main tracks where I was the ever much old in, uh, let me, not do it. In Metro, Benton going to speak for me at what I gave you my address. One, one, four, 
Mr. French, uh, Randy French, gave him gave this to me. He um, he, he and his family translated for me, uh, and this is as what he said: um, "I am 64 years old. I rent at Lakeside Park for the last 21 years. I paid less than 250 a month at that time. I am on disability Social Security with less than 1,000 income. Less than 1,000 income." Now my rent is 510 per month. Realtors, think about that. So I have less than 490 to live on. With an increase every year of my rent, the tax also goes up. I then will have a smaller amount to live on. Soon I will not have enough to buy food and necessities, even with the food stamps I get. I pay $75 a quarter for insurance on my home. Also, water is 85 per quarter. My electricity is 200 per month. My TV service is 118 per month. And I have, I have received the renter's tax credit of 1000 last year, which helped. This tax is unfair to me and others like me. I have nothing and next to nothing. And if it continues, I will have nothing. The park will then evict me. Reduction or an end of this tax will allow me to pay my rent easier. Thank you. All right, now, for mine, uh, Roger Vincent at 16845 Longfellow Court. <clears throat> I've talked with you before. Um, I am the president of the Residents Association of Lakeside Village. Uh, we had a, our, our monthly meeting this last month, and we discussed this in, in whole. Everybody got to their say, and basically, we're, we're, whether we wanted to tell you zero or okay with the seven and a half, 25. Well, we were split and it was very close and uh, almost 50-50, almost uh, there, there were more in the meeting by two uh, that wanted to said, okay, we'll, we'll accept the seven and a half, 25. The rest of us said no. Uh, so I'm here on for the rest of us who say no. Zero tax is what we would like to have. Nothing, because it is totally, totally, totally unfair. I am a retired military person. I served this country for 32 years. I, with that retirement and my Social Security, will not be able to pay these taxes as if it continues and the rent keeps going up because Lakeside Village will raise my rent every single year. They have done so the last 14 years I've lived there. They haven't missed. They won't miss. They raise it. So if we could get this back to some reality, that maybe even we can get the rent lowered and people could live there. The, we have no, no place else to go. The, the, the last time I checked, uh, because we have um, Section 8 people in, in our park, there's over a 1,000 people on the waiting list on Section 8 to even get in one of those places. Where do you go? Out in the street? Not me. Thank you. My name is Edward Pipkin. I live at 11326 Lakeside Drive. I myself am on the board with Lakeside. With these social, I am Sergeant at Arms. Um, I myself, like Roger, am Air Force. I'm an Air Force military veteran. Uh, my wife and me both are on Social Security Disability and Medicare. Uh, with the raising of the rent every year in these taxes, we are both together under $42,000 a year. We, we cannot go any further financially. Like Roger said and Yelder said too, Lakeside doesn't miss a beat when it comes to raising our rent. Uh, so we're asking, I'm asking for a zero on this tax, this property tax here. Um, there are other places, Washington County to the best of my knowledge, does not have a 911 tax. 
I wouldn't mind paying 15, 20 cents, whatever, from other residents in Washington County for a 911 tax, something like that. There's other places to get taxed from. I mean, basically this, uh, what is it, $600,000 or whatever uh, tax to Washington County is a drop in the bucket. It's a drop in the bucket. Please get your tax somewhere else. That's all I'm asking. Thank you. Next person, name and address. Uh, thank you. Uh, Doug Gansler again, uh, 3706 Williams Lane in Chevy Chase. Um, I just want to make a couple points. The, the folks that have come up here to testify have obviously been incredibly articulate and passionate uh, because of the effect that this does have on them. And I want to, again, applaud the commission for, for looking at this. Um, a I just want to make a few points, which is, as has been mentioned right now, there is a double tax being assessed against the folks that live in, in Lakeside and the other communities in the county. Um, the, what we're really talking about here, I just think we ought to be clear about, which is, if you look at the, the proposal as drafted, what it's really doing, while we're talking about um, the last speaker, uh, two speakers, I guess we're talking about whether you want seven and a half or zero, but a very, very, very strong argu argument can be made that this is actually a brand new tax. Because in section 203, what, what is going on here, to be clear, is changing the definition from automobile trailer to now include permanent chases and a permanent foundation, which is, so it's really being changed from automobile trailer to what is what we know as a manufactured home, which are permanent, and people, a woman just testified she's been there 20 years, these are not homes that are going, putting on wheels and rolling out of town, they, these are permanent residents. So it's actually in some argument can be made that this is, if it were to be in past, it would go to a seven and a half tax that doesn't, shouldn't have already existed. Um, the other uh, point I wanted to make was, and, and this is on behalf of Lakeside, but in the bill itself, it specifically says that it can't be, um, th that it shall be unlawful for the mobile home park operator to separately charge said tax to any individual tenant. While that may be true, and, and obviously um, there are less scrupulous people that could own these parks down the road, they're just going to raise the rent. Uh, at some point, and so it, it, it so the I think it's very important um, to recognize that if it's seven and a half or which is less than fifteen, that is going to be passed on in one shape or another by somebody somewhere down the road, um, not obviously now, and and it would not be itemized as such. So we should be clear on that. And the second and the last point I want to make is the amb ambiguity that I suggested before, because. The tax should be on gross rental income and only rental income. It shouldn't be on taxes that the property owners are not making, so the water and sewer, which basically the property owners are just helping collect those taxes on behalf of the county, because otherwise that's being double taxed as well. And that's always been the case, by the way, it's for decades, but only recently there's been a unusual interpretation of that um, to suggest that they ought to be paying taxes on that. So with that, thank you again for your consideration. Next citizen, uh, name and address, please. Yes, Brenda Jones, and I live at 17021 Burwood Court, and that's at Lakeside. I've been here for the last three or four meetings, and everyone has commented and testified about the percentages and all that, I'm going to go on the other end and let you all know what a hardship it is. Um, and like they said, yes, okay, you're going to possibly drop it down to $25 a month. Well, that's not fair either because I have a single wide and the next person may have a double wide. So if he's paying $25 a month for his double wide that sits on a little bit more land, why should I pay $25? when I have a single Y. So that's not fair. Another issue is, like other ones had said, Lakeside will get that money back from us. You said they can't put it on us as renters, that they have to pay it. They're just going to increase the rent. So they're not going to be charged it. And I think it should be repelled completely. Um, it's a hardship on a lot of people that live there. A lot. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, uh, name and address. Um, Kristen Estes. I live at 84382 Singsway, Boonesboro, which is the Woodland Mobile Home Park. 
And I just want to um, reiterate that the hardship that it would be, I've lived in our mobile home probably, my mom and I bought it over 21 years ago. I've worked in Washington County for a nonprofit for 30 years now. And we moved there strictly because it's what we could afford. Um, we did not want, we, I, and then she suddenly passed away in 2017 and I had to, sorry, I don't want to get emotional, but I had to reassess whether I could even stay there by myself and I can make it, just make it. If we have, if I'm in forced to pay any more, I'll be forced to move out of the state. I'll have to go over to West Virginia just to be able to live. And I don't want to have to do that. Most of the people that live within my community are like myself, single, retired, on disability or social security. We don't live there because we, we think it's a fantastic, wonderful place. We live there because it's what we can afford. So I asked you to please consider reducing or repealing. I had a hard enough time even trying to find homeowner's insurance to cover my house because it is 21 years old. They didn't want to insure anything over 20 years old. I had to buy my insurance on the internet just to get my house covered. So it's only going to drop in value. I'm going to have a hard time reselling it. What I think it's worth and what, I, what it should be worth, I'm going to be lucky to get a fraction of that, even if I do have to move. So I thank you for your time, and thank you for your consideration. Thank you very much. Uh, next, name and address, please. Good morning, Commissioners. I'm Joyce Bruce. I'm at 11133 Lakeside Drive. That's lot 168. I, I want to speak on behalf of myself and the other disabled people over there. They're really struggling. I'm a disabled veteran. My next door neighbor is a dis disabled veteran. His wife works two jobs. She just recently had open heart surgery, went back to work as soon as the doctor would allow her to do so. And they're struggling. They're living paycheck to paycheck. The people across the street are disabled. They're living paycheck to paycheck. Every little cent that can be saved is a really, really big deal to everybody over there. So I hope that you consider reducing this or redacting as much as you possibly can. Thank you. Good day. Thank you very much. Um, next, name Hi, and address, I'm, please. I'm Carrie Cousins, 8403 Tustings Way, which is Woodland off of Lappins Road. And everything's pretty much been said. I just wanted to state that I have no problem if you want me to pay a tax on my mobile home. My issue is I don't think it should be a percentage of my lot rent. All the homes in our park probably range from a few thousand in value to 40, 50,000. Um, so where you fall into that doesn't matter. It's the percentage of the lot rent. And we do pay the highest lot rent in Washington County, which we live in a nice little development, wooded area off of Lappins, no complaints there. I just feel that if you want us to tax me on my home, give me a property tax ID number and assess my trailer every three years, and I'll pay the fair tax. So, thank you. Um, my name is Erica Johnson. I'm actually here on behalf of Woodland Community um, in lieu of our owner who has been involved actually in some of these meetings from the beginning as, as a mobile home operator. Um, she was not able to be here today, unfortunately. She really wanted our community to be represented from the owner's perspective. Um, I would just like to say this is interesting hearing um, a lot of the uh, kind of testimonies um, from the people and their perspective on this. Um, it's an excessive tax, and as the gentleman had, had stated, I feel that it, after reading and reading and rereading it and being in the property management industry, it, it's, a, it's a tax that has been widely misinterpreted <laughs> and applied in, in, in an excessive way. Um, and it, it surprises me um, because being in property management, you don't see this type of tax on rental income as far as uh, apartment rentals um, and things of that nature. It seems a bit discriminatory in that way. And I also, um, you know, on behalf of our tenants, um, our, our property owner definitely, if this is repealed, would pass on that um, uh, savings. And I, I know sometimes there's a little bit of... Uh, Will the property owners really do this? And she definitely cares, takes great pride in providing a wonderful community for our tenants and um, would definitely uh, pass on that savings um, because we know how vital, you know, $60 is a lot to anybody on a fixed income. And um, so definitely we are advocating for our tenants that this be repealed. 
Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other citizens who would like to testify? None. Commissioners, do you have any questions for staff? Um, if not, I can close the meeting and we can have discussion too. So hearing no questions, we will now close the public hearing. And I'll conclude the commissioners. I just had a, a question for Mr. Hershey. If it can be before or after, it doesn't matter. All right, let's go. Um, let's keep him on the open. Go ahead. Can you explain to me the how an apartment complex is taxed and how the uh, a mobile home park is also taxed? So a function of the assessment office, of course, but uh, I believe the assessment office bases it on revenue as well as on the valuation of the land and the improvements. So I don't think I may have put that somewhere. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good. We will now close. One last thing, we do have emails which will be put into the record. Um, that said, I will now close the public meeting. Commissioners, your comments, thoughts? I, I, I agree. I think this tax is excessive when you do something about it. I, I can't remember the, the lady's name. Um, and that, that I believe that this needs to be taxed as, uh, as, as property. Um, I think that's the fairest, the best way to do it. Um, I do know that there are two bills in Annapolis right now. One has already been submitted um, uh, with changing of ESTAT, with, which is our Department of Taxation, um, which is got, looks like it's going to put more control onto the county and less onto the state. Um, and that bill has just been submitted. There's a hearing, I think it's next week. Um, so that could change a lot of this. I 100% believe it needs to be taxed. As, as, as that property, whatever it is, if it gets assessed at $1,400 or 14000 I think that's the, the fair way to do it. Um, I'll be tracking this bill because I know at MAKO tomorrow, that's one of the bills that we're, we're uh, reviewing and going over. So hopefully, depending on how that works out, and there's another one that people are talking about but has not been submitted yet, so we don't know what's inside of that. So um, I think that's the, the fairest way and the best way to go. Well, based on... Uh the bills that are being uh, put forth down in Annapolis on the assessed values of homes and so forth, uh, you still have to take into consideration the what what the lots being taxed at. I think uh, in earlier discussion, the lots are extremely small, so it would be helpful to me if I knew how much that small lot was being taxed. Uh, who's to say that that small lot isn't being way overtaxed as well, and. Uh, this is just so, to me, it's just, I probably have a hard time understanding everything. So, I mean, I'm not going to be opposed to appealing it uh, and maybe starting fresh, starting over with something and uh, and see if there is a more fair way if uh, we do institute a tax. I think if you look at my history as a, an elected official, I'm for less taxes and uh, I'm certainly going to support uh, the cause for all the individuals out there at all of the trailer that owns uh, mobile homes. And the one lady had mentioned that her uh, Kelly Blue Book value of her home, I think, was $17,000. I've never seen her home, and even though that's a Kelly Blue Book value, I doubt if she would get $17,000 for that home. So, I mean, there's just so many variables here that uh, we need to really consider. And, uh, again, maybe it's time to just start over, and there's nothing wrong with that. So, thank you. One comment real quick to Commissioner Meinelschmidt's um, um, comment about a bill before Annapolis looking at the State Assessment's Office. If you could bring back to us um, information, there was something proposed similarly maybe last year or the year before about um, that those costs being passed on to the county for they would, I guess, be county employees possibly, or we would fund their office. Their Correct. The, currently, we fund 50% of the office, um, the two bills. Uh, one is at 60%, one is at 75%, um, but the, what they're looking at is that we have more control and authority over that 
there's two um, thought processes. Is one having ESTA not being a county employee is very good because you have the person who's assessing the property and the person who's collecting the taxes as two different entities. Do you really want the person assessing your property as the person that collects your taxes? Oh look, your tax you just went up fifty. I need more revenue. Your property's value just went up fifty thousand dollars, and look, I got more taxes. That's the that's one of the arguments is that um, we don't want the them to be county employees. Uh, so that's so, yeah. So that, that's that's good to know that there's some different alternatives that might be out there for us to consider. I, I know that was something we considered a few years ago. Um, I like the comment Commissioner Baker just said, eliminating the the tax now and looking and seeing how this new legislation may come down. I think we need to get past the notion that um, the tenants of these mobile home parks don't pay real estate taxes because they do pay it now through the rent. Um, it's paid to the owners of the mobile home parks and they pay property taxes. And it's in the several hundreds of dollars a year that's paid indirectly by the uh, mobile home park tenants. So they do pay taxes, they are contributing. Um, and some may also contribute as well through income tax. So taxes are being paid. I think we need to get past that notion. Um, the, the dollar amounts that were given by Mr. McDunn who spoke first, I know we talked about that a few weeks ago. They are paying taxes. If that was real property, they're paying taxes on a, on a home, a property, their dwelling, that would be valued at $107,000. And that's, that's, not, that's not feasible. That's, that's not realistic. I, I don't think that's right. Um, the $17,000 mobile home value that was given, a Kelly Blue Book value, um, the quick math that was <coughs> done on that, again, you're not talking about what's being collected, what's, what's reasonable, I don't think. Um, the prior board voted to give a pilot to a Bethel Garden Apartments, a housing unit here in Washington County in Hagerstown, and I believe that pilot created for a 42-year period property taxes on each unit that amounted to $80 a year, $80 a year. I think of all the list of apartment units that were given, I don't think any were that low, but Bethel Garden Apartments was pretty low, and, and that's if my memory serves me correctly. Um, you know, I, I think government is always best and works best in the citizens when the citizens are taxed the least amount as possible. I think they are being taxed. I think it is a double taxation. We're getting it from them two ways, and it's we're getting it from them. We're not getting it from the mobile home park. Um, I do, uh, the last lady who spoke, I didn't get her name, but I do know the lady that she was representing, and she seems like someone who probably would pass along that savings to the tenants. I don't think every mobile home park will necessarily do that, though. So I, I just I just hope we're, we're conscious of that fact that there's a good chance that your rent that you're paying now may stay the same. Um, but um, as your rents increase year to year and their mobile home parks is a business and they may increase it over time, I, I think that's where you'll see your savings as the future goes on. So I would be in favor today of eliminating the tax. Um, that would be my position. Okay, I'll uh, get my two cents in. I know sometimes I'm the bad guy up here. At least I've been pointed out to be that way by some of the spokespeople. I'm not actually the bad guy. Uh, do I think you're being taxed too much? Yeah, I do. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Is the only fair way, which I don't think will happen, uh, Mr. Meinelschmidt thinks we have a shot, is if each one was assessed individually. But that won't happen either. So you got to be careful what you wish for. The house that sold for sixty or seventy thousand, you're liable to get lumped on with your seventeen thousand dollar mobile might get lumped into a thirty thousand dollar average sale or forty thousand. So you got to be careful there. Uh, that that could happen. It's that's the way the world works, and that's the way the assessment office works. Or I, I got to I got to remind you, this is for the commissioners only to comment, Mr. McDonough. Mr. McDonough, I got to remind you. But so if it's assessed, see, I told you I was a bad guy, golly. But uh, I'm just telling you the way it works. I know. Uh, so with that being said, would I be favor in, in reduction? Sure, absolutely. I think you all presented a good case and and uh, understand it. Would I? But I, you know, you'll no one will ever convince me that this board of county commissioners, at least the majority, just raised taxes for public service, safety, ambulances, first responders. You've got to pay your at least part. If, it, if, we, if you're paying 300 a year, 250, I feel like everybody has to take 
be vested in their schools, roads, buses, first responders. That's what it was all about. I mean, when you, I know my old butt, when I have the big one, I want to be able to pick the phone up and get 911, get 911, get an ambulance there. Y'all be thinking about the same thing. And how, what are, the honor, what are all the honor citizens that just have to pay more taxes to support that? What are they going to say? You know, I think fair is fair. Am I willing to reduce? Sure. Yeah. And I, I'd probably be pretty generous. But that's probably about as far as I'll go on that. But I, I think y'all did a wonderful job presenting. I really do. Thank you. Commissioners, do you want to take action today, wait a week or so, and come back and make the final decision? Thoughts? I need to process it. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to agree. I, this tax is excessive. We've got to work on that. It would be my suggestion we come back and make, make all this information in, their testimony, and come back within a week or two and make the final decision. Commissioners, could I get support for that? or I, I would... Uh, I think it, if it's all right, if we could put it on the agenda for two weeks and so that we can make a decision at that point, I don't want to prolong this. I think that's not, right. I'm good, with not that. good to the citizens. I do not want to prolong this. Um, I think I also would, I, I want to understand better the difference of how an apartment is complex as tax and how um, a trailer, uh, trailer park home uh, is, is taxed so I can get that and hopefully we can get some better information on these, uh, these two SDAT bills. Um, but if it's all right, if in two weeks. Right, we can wait in two weeks. So are we giving our citizens and those who testified notice that in two weeks we'll have the discussion in case they had new arguments to come It'll back be, during well, the public comment the time? Public comment time hearing is concluded. Mm -hmm. You can still make comments, but we've got the emails are already, and we will give notice on our agenda that this will be there, and I'm sure we'll contact some of it. I'd just like the public, the citizens, to know that this issue will be brought back up again. Yeah, but public comment and information... There may have been some issues about getting notice of this meeting in the public. Yeah, so the just, public just make sure that they include it, but they're still welcome to send us information for us to know. Okay, that's a middle. That's all I'm saying. So they know they can still submit. All right. That being said, we'll put this back on the agenda in two weeks. And make sure everybody is notified. And thank you very much. Now the board of county commissioners need to convene. Board of is the board of health. Do I need an official motion? Okay. How you doing? A brief recess and then come back.
Terry, make it. Terry, we're, everybody, we're going to reconvene our meeting here, please. Terry, we need we need you, Matt, breeding Terry. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, where's Randy? Where's Randy? One more. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, commissioners, I need a motion to convene as the board of health. Board of Health. Second. I have a second. Any discussion? All in favor? We are now convening as the Board of Health. Gentlemen, introduce yourself and the matter. Thank you, Commissioners. Earl Stoner, Health Officer at the Health Department. Dan Triplett, Administrator at the Health Department. And we are here today to um, ask for the awarding of a one year uh, extension to our non emergency Medicaid transportation program contract. Um, the state of Maryland, uh, the Department of Health, is in the process of, in essence, um, centralizing this program um, and moving toward having a um, sort of a one broker system within the state. Um, we have historic health departments have historically um, provided this uh, program through our departments for probably about 20 years. But uh, as I mentioned, now the state wants to centralize it, um, go with a broker. Uh, we are here today because our contract uh, would need to be extended in order to meet the, the time parameters or the time frame. Uh, we were asked by the uh, health departments, were asked by the Attorney General's office <coughs> to um, seek uh, one year extensions of the contract. Uh, we talked to procurement here at the county and Rick um, got the okay from them. And we are here today to seek an, award, an awarding of a one year extension for this program. I'd like to make a motion uh, as uh, recommend a motion as uh, Earl. Earl. No, I wasn't thinking of oh. I to make sure. He's known That's me right. since I was 11. Like, come on. I'd like to make a motion to uh, support the motion as recommended. I, have a first, I, didn't, I knew your name. <laughs> first and second, any discussion, commissioners? All in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Thank you. And I imagine I need a motion to go out of reconvene and reconvene as the commissioner. Make the motion to reconvene as county commissioner. Uh, real quick, uh, yeah. any update to the uh, email that you had sent us yesterday? Coronavirus? Yeah. Yeah, we're all not going to die, so we're all going to okay. be okay. Um, the, CDC, the CDC is investigating about 110 cases as we speak. In the state uh, of Maryland? No, not in the state okay. of Maryland. There is one individual in the state of Maryland that's being evaluated. Uh, hasn't been confirmed, no yay or nay as mm -hmm. of this time. Uh, we as public health are just sort of in um, case finding mode, containment mode. So uh, there, obviously it's going to be a fluid situation. If you can remember back, um, these new viruses usually hopefully run, it, run their course in a couple months, but I'll keep you guys updated. Well, I obviously. appreciate that update yesterday. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. I have a motion to reconvene as the Board of County Commissioners. Is there a second? Second. First and second, all in favor, say aye. Aye, five zero. Oh. Thank you, Earl. Next up, memorandum of understanding with the town of Boonesboro. Please introduce yourself in the matter. Jeremy Moose, uh, Director of Environmental Management. John Swagger, Stormwater Management Coordinator. Um, we are here today to ask for a motion to authorize execution of a memoranda of understanding with the Town of Boonesboro, Town of Smithsburg, and the Town of Williamsport to cooperate with implementing the National Pollutant Discharge Emulation, uh, Elim uh, Elimination System Separate Storm Sewer Permit. Uh, 
This is an ep excellent opportunity for Washington County to continue working in partnership with the towns. Um, John did a great job coordinating this. Uh, and with that said, uh, I'll turn this over to John just to give a brief uh, explanation uh, of the um, permit. Just shortly, that the NPDES permit allows permittees to share responsibility with other entities. Um, the MOU essentially just <coughs> puts in writing what we already do for the towns. This way the towns can turn that over to MDE and MDE will know that those requirements of the permit are being taken care of and that the county will take care of that for them. Uh, essentially it's just a good partnership with us that we continue with the towns. And uh, I see that all three towns yeah. have signed this yes. Yes. An agreement. And uh, with that said, um, this is at no additional cost to Worcester County either. This, this is a great opportunity to continue working with the towns and working with the municipalities. Commissioner's okay. thoughts, comments? Motion to authorize the execution. And the first, is there a second? Yeah. The first and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Five oh. Thank you, Commissioners. Thank you. Next letter requesting submission of the FY20 infrastructure. Susan Buchanan, Scott Hobbs. Good afternoon, Scott Hobbs, Director of Engineering. Susan Buchanan, Director, Office of Grant Management. And we are here seeking a consensus from the board to submit a letter to the Maryland Department of Transportation requesting a submission of the FY20 InfraGrant Infra grant for Rebuilding America, the grant application for Interstate 81. That's phase two. Phase two includes widening and reconstruction of the interstate and interchange work from exit one, Maryland 63 and 68, and Williamsport uh, to north of Halfway Boulevard at the interchange at exit five. On January 29, 2019, the board approved local funding support of $1 million for the infra grant submission at that time, contingent upon an approved grant award. Uh, since the ARF was submitted two weeks ago, MDOT has contacted uh, county staff about this request and reiterated uh, the local support as part of the application. Uh, one thing they mentioned, any other additional um, funding or support beyond that uh, would also be strongly uh, encouraged by the state to make the application um, as strong as possible moving forward. As part of the application, uh, the state works with the county. They're seeking on the last go around in the infra um, grant application approximately $55 million uh, through the infra grant, approximately $42 million through state funds, and then additionally from there any county local support, part of which, which was the Halfway Boulevard Extended Project which includes Appalachian Regional Commission funding. So they utilize some of that as uh, local support and contribution as well as the million dollars. So we wanted to share um, our request um, and request that again be brought forward in that letter to uh, provide and seek assistance from the state to resubmit for that grant application uh, again this year. It's the letter, it's on the back here. Correct. Okay. Commissioners, have you had a chance to review that letter and support this? Motion to support the letter. We need a, just a consensus. consensus. Okay. Is that okay? All right. Do we need, uh, where's the million dollars? Which fund will that become? The, fund? the million dollars that was um, pledged last year would come from reserves, and it is um, it is sectioned out uh, for that purpose. One thing I did hear uh, Mr. Hobbs mention was that the state mentioned pos potentially additional support. Is that correct? One thing in the grant application compared to other applicants they found was the cost benefit ratio okay. and the more local funding and support that the county could bring, uh, the better our number um, is and application is. And that's just one request that they made moving forward. If there was any other local support or contribution beyond the million, they'd also, you know, we're wondering uh, what the county's position on that was. And part of it is through the ARC grants and application, part of it is the million and if there's any other funding contributions Are you talking at that about point. private funding? Any, uh, yeah, local government or private funding counts towards uh, that, that cost benefit analysis. Count tw counts towards the local share. Towards the local share. So we do have the million reserved, but nothing beyond that. 
Commissioners, one consensus. What any, anybody else? Are we pursuing? I don't, no, no, okay, I don't saw you talk. Are we are we pursuing any kind of private funding? The private funding is through uh, the Halfway Boulevard Extended Project with the developer uh, constructing a portion of the road, and that's from existing Halfway Boulevard to Maryland 63 Greencastle Pike. So the county has a capital improvement plan project now that utilizes um, ARC funding, that Appalachian Regional Federal funding, in coordination with contribution with a, a local developer, as we've done on these Making Connections. That's another Making Connections project that we have in the capital improvement plan. And again, part of this is the state requesting those private dollars, local dollars be shown and any other uh, monetary contribution beyond that be shown to help our uh, application moving forward with what the state. Saying, local dollars will help increase Does, the possible match from the state to other agencies, correct? correct? Would any possible work that is being contemplated on Vasil Boulevard count? We had discussions with them about that and they feel that um, they need to have uh, more contribution on the halfway boulevard section and Vasil is um, further removed from that area and wasn't considered. We talk about the, some of the development being done in and around the area and trying to leverage as much as we can with some of the private development and that helps with letter support. So we're looking for letter support from agencies, um, the MPO, <laughs> planning organization with Matt Molinex and Jim Kircher from Greater Hagerstown has helped us um, acquire those letters which adds a lot to the application. However, the local contribution is a, is a big part of it also. Okay. Consensus for the letter? No, I'm good. Two nods, three nods. Wayne, you okay? Four or five nods. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Next up, Sarah. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Sarah Greaves, Chief Financial Officer. And Rachel Brown, Human Resources Director. Uh, we've been before you a couple times, Commissioners, related to the minimum wage legislation and the county's approach moving forward. Um, the current minimum wage is $11 an hour. That was effective January 1, 2020. Uh, Maryland lawmakers passed legislation to raise that to $15 an hour through 2025 uh, through incremental yearly increases. The last time we spoke, uh, staff represented a part-time scale option. After further exploration of this potential scale, um, it was determined that there would be a greater benefit provided to a temporary part-time employee over a regular part-time employee. Um, we did run an example for the commissioners. It's on the second page of your ARF. So at this point, staff would not want to recommend moving forward with a temporary part-time scale that would um, increase as previously suggested with the uh, beginning rate being the minimum wage. So therefore, uh, the staff is here to recommend still a path forward uh, using the current scale for all employees, not making a change to the scale, and would essentially be moving the affected employees to the closest step on their current grade to meet any new minimum wage legislation. Uh, we would like to offer that potentially in 2025, um, after these increases are implemented, it may make sense at that time to look at a part-time scale option separated out from um, temporary for regular part-timers, uh, but at this point, we're not recommending moving forward in that manner, at least the way it was suggested previously. Um, this is moving employees to meet the minimum wage legislation is the most cost effective solution for the county at this time. There were many options that we looked at and evaluated. Uh, they were very costly. And so at this point, we're recommending moving forward in this manner. So in this, it's just we're looking at a complete just compression. So the person, the position at step whatever that's making $15 now, and then the person who's making $10, that step's going to be at 15 and then this is going to go up to 15 That is correct. There will be compression. Um, what I would have to offer in that case would just be the fact that if that's an existing employee today, 
We do have um, annual steps that we would hope to provide to our employees and then potentially any COLAs on top of that that could be provided to existing employees to separate that gap over the next five years. So if a person making 15, whatever step seven step is grade one, and we did a COLA, um, we're going to have these new grade six is just gonna be that minimum wage increase, so that COLA is gonna be increasing. So a person making $15 a position, not a person, because I know this be getting the step increases, but a position, a grade seven, step one, whatever, the 1502, whatever that is, um, that COLA would go up, but these positions that are now at $11 would only be going up at the minimum. And That's they're not correct. gonna be getting that additional COLA. That's correct, because even if we look at, um, if we look at the increases uh, related to the minimum wage, generally a lot of them are 6% per year, so that far exceeds any COLA or STEP that we'd be providing anyway. So those employees uh, would benefit from the minimum wage legislation and the rest of the employees that that minimum wage did not necessarily <coughs> affect at that time would benefit from the county action. So in our grade and STEP scale, whatever that new number five is, grade five, would be a it would not be <coughs> grade five to grade six to grade it, so the scale would be a little bit off on that bottom row. Over a period of time, yes. So currently, based on the first change, our, to be able to be at $11 or an hour more, our grade ones are now grade one step six, and our grade twos are now grade two step three. So slowly each year, we'll have to continue to move up the grade system. Okay. Um, and part, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Part of the recommendation today um, for consider, or at least uh, for the commissioners to consider, is uh, to implement any changes to wages um, at, on July 1 of each year. Currently, the legislation um, deems that those wage increases have to be enacted by January 1 of the calendar year. Uh, so for budgetary purposes and other administrative reasons, we would be requesting to implement it six months earlier for consideration. I have a question. Sure. This is recommended motion, or is this, do you want a consensus? Uh, yeah. Because a motion means where you may be confined to what you bring back without Really just a consensus uh, probably to move forward in the manner that staff is proposing, which is basically making the changes necessary to comply with the law. We'll uh, do it six months in advance. Would guidance at this time to do that for consensus to move forward? Yes, I think, I think so. yes, and that would. You'll need to bring it back for our approval. Correct? We will be bringing through the budget process any annual steps or COLAs that we're recommending, uh, but we will assume based on this conversation, that we can go ahead July 1 and pay um, those making under 1175, 1175. That's what we're here today for. A consensus or motion, what you want? <coughs> County Administrator? Kirk, consensus Kirk should or we have motion a motion for this? You just need consensus and a direction so you know what, the, what assumptions okay. you're using to put in your budget together. Okay. okay. Commissioner's okay for. I'm sorry. Right, and that will, would be included into the budget. Yep. Yeah. So, so it was a consensus enough to move forward. I think a consensus would be in keeping with what right. we, we do along the way through the budget process. This might be our first kind of budget item that's been brought to us okay. to consider. There, so. there you go. Does okay. that help you? I, yep. I do have a question. So, in essence, the, the proposal. I think I largely agree with it. It's the least cost option. That is correct. Is All right. Um, thank you. Sorry, I assume as part of this, some later time you'll be back in here to revise some of the scale to incorporate this, and we'll be able to through the budget process. This um, consensus here does not necessarily have a scale change through the budget process. If we recommend any type of cola, we would present it at that time. So we're basically just going to be re removing some grades and steps that are below that area. What we um, would think is after t or during 2025, take a look at that scale because <laughs> the first five grades may no longer be relevant. Mm -hmm. And then at that time, we could um, either create a new scale or we could remove grades one through five from use if that's what makes sense. 
Um, but at this point, we're going to keep our scale intact, move each um, person that's, that does not meet that minimum wage requirement to the closest step on their current grade. So what's a, a grade one that's $15 an hour? Is that like a step down? <laughs> it would be a pretty high step at this point. Oh, I don't it have would that be. Me at this point. Okay, but that's correct. And that's why I think after all said and done, we reevaluate that and tidy that up. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you. Commissioners, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. We'll be at National Court Bridge, 2 p.m. Thank you.